We live in a world of being busy, distractions everywhere, information overload, and other things that can cause us to lose our focus. In Focus the Basics, we will dig deeper into important topics. In this episode, let's look at attitude. John Hagee tells of a true story of a man and his wife. A famous writer was in his study reflecting about the past year. One, last year my gallbladder was removed and I was bedridden and suffered for several days. Two, the same year I reached the age of 60 and was forced to leave the publishing company where I spent the last 30 years. Three, the same year my father died. Four, the same year my son failed his medical and because he was in a terrible car accident and as a result he was hospitalized for several weeks and my new car he was driving was a total loss. He then said, this past year was a horrible year. His wife walked in, read what he had said. She sat down, writing her point of view on another paper, gave it to her husband and said, read this. One. Last year I finally got rid of a gallbladder that did nothing but give me pain and suffering for years. Now I feel wonderful. 2. I turned 60 with good health, retired from my job, and now I can utilize my time to do what I want for the rest of my life. 3. The same year my father died at the age of 95 without suffering or depending on anyone and without any critical condition. He peacefully stepped into eternity into the hands of God. 4. The same year God blessed my son with life. My car was destroyed, but my son was alive and without permanent disability. Her conclusion, last year was a fabulous year. King Jehoshaphat visited the king of Israel, Ahab. King Ahab asked if Jehoshaphat would join him in taking Ramoth Gilead from the Syrians. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire first for the word of the Lord. Ahab gathered about 400 prophets and asked if to attack Ramoth Gilead or not. And they said the Lord would give it to him. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here another prophet of the Lord of whom we may inquire? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah the son of Imlah, but I hate him for he never prophesies good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. As Micaiah the prophet was summoned, other prophets said the Syrians would be destroyed. The messenger told Micaiah to speak favorably with the rest of the prophets. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, what the Lord says to me, that I will speak. After pushing, Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his home in peace. Ahab told Jehoshaphat he wouldn't prophesy good about him. Micaiah described how an enticing spirit would entice the prophets to tell Ahab to go into battle that would lead to his fall. So kings Jehoshaphat and Ahab battled the Syrians and it almost cost Jehoshaphat his life, and did cost Ahab his life, and just as Micaiah prophesied, it happened. Jehoshaphat means Jehovah has judged, and he was a good king, son of King Asa. Digging deeper, a valley near Jerusalem where the ultimate judgment occurs is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. A previous Syrian king, ben had lost battles against King Ahab multiple times. Ben-Hadad's life was spared, but that wasn't the end of the story. A prophet told Ahab, Thus says the Lord, Because you have let go out of your hand the man whom I had devoted to destruction, therefore your life shall be for his life, and your people for his people. The Lord also said Ahab's blood would be licked by dogs where Naboth was murdered for his vineyard. This prophecy came true after King Ahab died in battle. To learn more about King Jehoshaphat, view the Battle is the Lord's video of the Hewar Land series. More about King Ahab and Naboth can be viewed in the Unintended Consequences episode of the Football Faith videos. 
Focus on having a submissive attitude towards God. And you, Solomon, my son, obey the God of your father and serve him with a submissive attitude and a willing spirit. For the Lord examines all minds and understands every motive of one's thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you abandon him, he will reject you permanently. A person looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Focus on having a praising attitude. After the deliverance from the Egyptians at the Red Sea, the Israelites sung, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will extol him. So that all will honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Can you sing? Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Focus on having an attitude of prayer and thanksgiving. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Billy Graham said, It is not the body's posture, but the heart's attitude that counts when we pray. Focus on having a gracious attitude. Let your gracious attitude be known to all people. The Lord is near. To malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. Focus on having Jesus' attitude. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was humble, gentle, a servant, and loves us. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wrapping up, we saw how a person's attitude shows how they handle situations. We looked at Ahab's bad attitude towards Micaiah that helped cost him his life. Our focus points are having a submissive attitude toward God, a praising attitude, prayer and thanksgiving attitude, gracious attitude, and strive to have Jesus' attitude. Chuck Swindoll said this, I believe the single most significant decision I can make on a day-to-day -day basis is my choice of attitude. Do you have a bad attitude towards others? If we are honest, each of us can have bad days when our attitudes are lacking. Ask God to help us to have a submissive, praising, prayerful, gracious attitude. If your attitude towards God is bad, ask for forgiveness and to help you. If you are not following Jesus, make today your day of salvation by clicking on the Salvation Prayer video to shortly follow. God bless you.